What is up, DCS crew? It is Carlos back at it today with a, another episode. This is episode two of Darn Close Shave. That's going to be the name of the series where I talk about what's in my pockets, you know, quick pocket dump, and then show you what I'm going to use for the shave, you know, have a shave, talk a little bit about it. And today's uh, soap du jour is uh, the Explorer from Zingari Man. Now, um, what really... Uh, brought me close to this particular soap is not only the base, the Sago base uh, made by Heather from Zingari Man, which is amazing, but the fact that it is uh, an homage uh, and it's based on the notes for this particular cologne for men, which is uh, Bulgari Man Wood Essence. Really, really good stuff. I'm gonna use this at the end of the shave. And uh, yeah, so stay tuned. After the intro, we'll talk a little bit about what's in my pockets and what I'm gonna use for the shave. guys welcome back um now we are doing a shave with the explorer from zingari man the scent notes are actually right on the actual soap uh it does say citrus wood and vetiver excuse me citrus woods and vetiver um and that is essentially the scent notes uh that we're taking directly off of uh bulgari man uh which is bulgari man's wood essence all right one thing I really like about Zingari Man is the fact that you can get pretty much the whole suite of items that you need for a shave, with the exception of the razor and the aftershave, because you can get the soap from them. You can typically get the uh, the recovery splash, which is essentially the aftershave toner, and uh, you can get the aftershave balm. Now, there are two versions of balm that she currently sells. She usually sells one that is scented just like the soap itself, or she will uh, provide one that is unscented. Now. Um, the unscented comes in two varieties, and in this particular case, I have the Sago version, which is one that includes, um, I believe, if, not, if I'm not mistaken, it is uh, including uh, tallow in that one. So uh, there you go. I'm not going to be using that one today. I'm going to be using uh, the standard one that is scented uh, just like the soap, which is Explorer. Because of the fact that there is no uh, aftershave splash, what I've done was I've actually purchased this um, particular aftershave to go with any of my items that do not have aftershaves. And this is Seen. Um, I know it says S-I-N, but it's pronounced Seen, like S-E-E-N. Um, it's Spanish for Seen, like uh, without. Um, so it has no fragrance. It's fragrance-free aftershave splash from Phoenix Artisan uh, Accoutrement. So, uh, really, really good stuff comes in that old school kind of looking bottle. I mean, this is whatever I'm not using, you know, just a standard aftershave. I throw this on and I mean, it will keep the scent from the shave that I've had uh, and not kind of, you know, uh, muck it up with anything else. Okay, so that being said, what's in my pocket today, uh, I have uh, my flashlight, which is the uh, Lumen Top EDC05. I've actually done a video on this particular uh, flashlight. So that's the flashlight I have today. And because of the fact that the colors on the Explorer are green and black, or black and green, um, I went with uh, the Kershaw Bare Knuckle. And uh, this particular one is, uh, as you can see, green scales with the black washed blade. And the bowl that I'm going to be using is just like episode one, which is the three printed shave bowl with uh, Zingari Man's uh, <clears throat> Explorer already loaded into it and a 24 millimeter uh, tuxedo knot with a handle from DS Cosmetic. Um, this is the Kevy Shaves edition. Uh, it's kind of like black with wisps of like white, kind of like smoke in it. I'm going to go ahead and use that. And then today's razor is the Charcoal Goods Everyday uh, Razor Head. And this is the Razor Rock Barber Barbershop uh, Barber Pole Handle. Okay, so uh, both of them are stainless steel and it is loaded with a Gillette Nasset blade with its first use. So let me go ahead and uh, wet the face. I did just come out of the shower, but I'm just going to go ahead and hydrate one more time and uh, whip up the lather. And we're going to go ahead and start it uh, with the shave. And with the lather. All right. Now, the, uh, the, the Sago base in particular from Zingari Man takes a lot of water and it keeps on asking for more. It's 
one of those bases that it's nice. They call it thirsty. Uh, I kind of felt also that the last lather I had done could have used a little bit more working into. And by the way, I'm actually working on a, uh, this is uh, a three day shave, meaning it's been three days since I have shaved. So it should be interesting to see how well the Charcoal Goods Everyday Razor is able to put away this hair and give me a nice smooth face yet again. Now, <clears throat> right here, I have like these two little nicks. Uh, I just wanna go ahead and provide that as a disclaimer. I'm not gonna be shaving this area here because while I was playing with my dog, he jumped up to, to lick my face as I was bending down to go ahead and give him a hug. And uh, he ended up hitting uh, right here by his jaw and two of his teeth actually hit this little area here. So while it is healing up, I'm just gonna avoid shaving in that area. Okay, a little bit more louder. <clears throat> and back onto this one more time. <sighs> so, um, interesting weekend I had. Uh, what I have actually been doing on my channel is typically, you know, knife reviews. And now I'm starting to do shave videos and stuff like that. But, you know, generally just sticking to EDC or knife stuff and everything, you know. Uh, I wanted to do more like gun related stuff, especially since I had gone to SHOT Show last year. And uh, unfortunately, with the new president, very polarizing stance on gun culture as we know it and uh just the fact that you know any gun related videos are going to be automatically demonetized by youtube because they deem them to not be something that they would want viewers to really gravitate towards a lot of channels are just not going to do it and i don't blame them so what i'm doing a lot more is uh this stuff flashlight videos uh probably do some of my backpacks. I got a couple really cool ones I can go ahead and show off. And uh, I also have the occasional cool story that I can give you from friends that I meet up with that uh, give me knives of theirs or send in knives to be able to be sharpened because that's something I do on the side. Provided it's not like a steep recurve or something like that, I can sharpen knives. So. <clears throat> Long story short, I'm going to go ahead with the first pass with the grain. Long story short, a friend of mine, we'll call him Tony, actually asked me if I could uh, take a look at some old knives that were given to him by his, uh, his late father who passed not too long ago. And he told me, look, they're, you know, they're not much to look at. But they were my old man's, and I'd like to see if maybe if you could, if you could sharpen them. So I said, yeah, sure, why not? You know, I'd be more than happy to go ahead and take a look at them. And, and you know, uh, for stuff like that, it kind of hits me in the feels because of the fact that, you know, my old man, he passed in just after Thanksgiving of uh, 2016. One of the things I inherited from him, aside from a few guns and stuff, is um, his Benchmade Mini Griptilian. So it's it's been it's always been something that's been close to me that you know it's uh, if it's something that belonged to your father and you have a decent relationship with him, I'll do everything I can to keep it in really good order. You know, I want to honor his memory. Because it would be like honoring my father's memory. So what he did was he gave me, uh, we met up a couple, I want to say a little bit about a month ago. And he gave me two or three fixed blades that he uses 
when he goes out camping. Okay, and I sharpened them. Right there in front of him, I was having a conversation with him. It took a little while because they were pretty dull, and uh, but I was able to get a you know a nice, very good edge. Uh, not a mirror edge because truth is, um, I don't believe that knives need a mirror edge if they're actually being used. They're all they're going to be like that for all of you know what two days until you start to use them, and then you're going to have that edge look all you know normal again. So what's the point in going through all that extra work? And he agreed. So I uh, I took really good care of the knives. And then he told me about the knives that belonged to his dad. So we met up today. I had two knives that I was supposed to give him. So when I gave him the knives, he gave me the two other ones. Um, one of them is just a, a rinky-dinky you know, Chinese made uh, Remington knife, which is, you know, it's, it's a cheapy little knife. It's got a uh, combo edge. And when I say combo edge, that's, uh, that means it's got a plain edge and then halfway in or a little bit of the way in has serrations. So it's partially serrated. Okay. Now for serrations, you don't really, you don't really sharpen them like you do with your you know, your standard uh, sharpener. There's a way to do them really easy. So I told him, yeah, i take care of it. That wouldn't be a problem. Now, the second knife actually intrigued me because it's a fixed blade. It's not a folding knife like the Remington one. And it's made in Japan. But when I saw it and it came in a leather sheath, he took it out. He showed it to me. It immediately intrigued me, and he was kind of surprised because when he took it out and he unsheathed it, I'm like, oh, that's a boot knife. And he's like, well, how the hell did you know? Well, you could tell by the way that the blade itself was shaped. And then before I go with the next pass, I'll, I'll actually show it to you. I'll just go ahead and show it really quick while this is just kind of marinating on my skin a little bit. By the way, the Sago base from Zingari, man, uh, is awesome. Heather is a beast when it comes to making these uh, these soaps, and this is no exception. I think uh, Explorer was the first one to have the Seiko base, but this is what the uh, the knife itself looked like. You get a nice close look at it, and then it's got a clip in the back, but it's a little worse for wear. This was probably big in like the 1970s. It's got a, a little hole there for the lanyard. And then this is the knife. It is... See if I can show the name on it right there. Uh, it's the Explorer MM1. Okay, now this is a Japanese made uh, boot knife or, you know, a dagger that's double edged. It actually has an edge on both sides, but the edge has been pretty mangled. I mean, it's. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> As you can see, it's set up on both sides to be sharpened from basically uh, the end of where like this, this kind of, uh, this edge kind of converts right here. It kind of converges to, to like a tip, to, to like an edge, and then it goes right that to, to the top. And then the same on the other side with the thickness, it kind of gets thinner and thinner. And then that's the edge and it goes up. So I told him number one, I'd actually be really interested in uh, sharpening that. And number two, I wanted to look up a little bit of information on it. Because it was pretty intriguing for me. I'd never seen something like that before. I'd seen other, you know, boot knives. Nothing quite like that. So, on the whole, like at home, look up a little information on it. Yeah, Japanese made. You know, a boot knife came with the leather sheath. Uh, it's pretty common. I've seen some on eBay in like perfect condition. Currently listed for like 300 bucks. So I'm like, what the hell is this shit? And it's because of the fact that it's an older vintage knife. Um, they were big in the 70s and early 80s. Evidently, they were, 
it's it's nothing to write home about, but you know, uh, they're very scarce right now in decent condition. Now, I don't really care about the fact that it's in decent condition or not because for him, it's more sentimental than anything else. But I did tell him, look, you know, if you ever plan on wanting to carry it or something like that, you know, and you want a decent sheath, or you want to keep this one as it is and just kind of, you know, uh, deoxidize that clip, kind of like save it and uh, just treat that leather so you can keep it pristine. Get yourself another sheath, clean that one, you know, store it away. I know uh, a sheath guy, really, really good at making sheaths. His name is Mark Irving from Extreme Edge Custom Kydex. Actually does this stuff for me and my buddy Eric from the Outer Limitless YouTube channel. Go ahead and check him out if you got a minute. And he's like, yeah, man, I'm definitely going to look into that. So I have the knife now in my possession. And I'm really interested in checking out just to see uh, what kind of an edge I can put on it. It's the first time I'm actually going to ever uh, sharpen a uh, double-edged knife. And uh, it's kind of interesting because, you know, I figured I'd talk about a double-edged knife on today's wet shave, considering this is a double-edged blade. So... Yeah, that was, that was something that I thought was kind of cool that I picked up recently. Shout out to Tony. It's not his real name, but he knows. If he uh, watches this video, which is probably going to be long as hell, uh, he's going to go ahead and see the knife. He's like, oh shit, I remember when that happened. You can look back on this and remember what it looked like before I put a good edge on it. Oh, I love the passes with a double edge razor. You know, somebody asked me recently, you know, why do you shave with something like this when you, you know, you used to shave with cartridge razors all the time? And your dad, my dad, used to use cartridge razors too. And so did my grandfather. For most of his life, at least, that I know of. And I told him, well, the truth is twofold. Number one, I wanted to learn something unique during COVID-19. You know, 2020 was an odd year. And uh, if at anything else, as an optimist, it gave you the opportunity to learn something new. Learn a new trade. Learn something unique. Pursue something different. And I did, amongst a couple of other things, did a couple things. Number one, I grew a beard. I grew a bigger beard. And I, you know, would handle the beard and, you know, uh, work with it that way. And it was pretty cool, you know, uh, having the beard, you know, overgrown for a little while, look kind of burly. And I just, you know, it was an odd look. And then one day I'm like, man, you know what? I started watching Ken Surf's The Shape Channel. This is actually how I got into it. And started watching all the vintage stuff. Oh, I seem to have nicked myself a little bit there on that side. I started watching all of the, the vintage shaves he did with uh, the Gillette um, butterfly razors, which are, um, they're twist to open. And what they do is they have these hinges that when you twist them, they kind of open up like this. You insert the uh, the razor uh, blade and then you twist the bottom and they kind of come back, clamp back. And when the door's closed, the razor is then shave ready. I'm like, man, that's pretty cool. So I got a flare tip and then I got a, uh, a Gillette red tip. I tried shaving, shaving with them and, you know, it was kind of meh. Um... And looking back on it, I think that it was more me than anything else because number one, you got lack of experience. You had a uh, a mild razor because those razors were typically very mild. You know, they weren't open comb razors, or you know, they, they weren't aggressive with the uh, the blade gap or or even the blade exposure. Um, and could be, you know, I just had shitty 
like shave soap, that sort of thing. But kind of got me into it, kind of learned a little bit about technique. And then uh, I, I learned, you know, that different razors give me different results. Hence the reason why I'm using this one today um, on episode two. So I started buying up <laughs> the shopping spree, uh, different types of razors and two piece razors like the Mercure 34C. And I got three piece razors like this guy. Now, when I say three piece razor, for the uninitiated, that, that means you get a top cap, you get a base plate, and then you get the handle and everything is uh, can be dismantled. Okay, that's a, that's a three piece razor. So I found, for me at least, three piece razors were the way to go. I love taking stuff down, deep cleaning it. I clean all of my razors after every shave because I like the term shave ready. I like the feeling where you don't have to look at something and see, oh man, is it ready? Is the blade, you know, rusted? Is it not going to shave right? Is it, you know, is there like caked up residue on it? You know, shit, all, all that stuff. I'm not into any of that. Take out the razor, shave with it, clean it, put it away. I kind of feel like people that uh, don't clean their stuff after shaving are the equipment of the people that like they'll cook and they'll leave the uh, the pots and the pans and the plates and all that crud, you know, for like the next day <laughs> to clean up. They're not gonna fuck up their good vibe after eating a good meal by having to clean afterwards. And personally, I don't really mind the cleaning part. It's actually pretty nice, especially when you realize, you know, this will help increase the longevity of your equipment. It's like cleaning knives. It's like cleaning, you know, firearms and, and everything. It, it retains the effectiveness of whatever the piece of equipment is you're using. If it's a razor, how well it shaves. If it's a knife, how well it cuts and how well the action is. And if it's a firearm, well, the truth is you want it performing 100% in the event that you carry a firearm because you want to know that and hope that with the right training, should you ever have to use it, and I hope that you never have to, Shit, I hope I ever never have to. But you hope that in the event that you do, it's going to run at 100% because you've done your part in keeping it as close to that as possible. So that's why I do stuff like, you know, I take them down, I clean them. Uh, if it's a knife, I sharpen it. If it's a firearm, I break down all the carbon that's inside and I lube it, you know, that sort of thing. Put it back together, store it, and it's ready for the next, you know, the next time I need it. So, uh, aside from that, one thing that I found that, you know, really worked for me were less mild razors. Uh, like I said before, the Gillette series of uh, Super Speeds. I think what they were called, the Super Speeds. Uh, they have a blue, which was like the mildest one, the blue tip. And they had like the flare tip, which was kind of uh, not as mild, but I wouldn't really call it medium or even aggressive. And then you had a red tip, which was essentially same thing as the flare tip. Only difference being that, is that it's a little bit more weighted. So... Uh, you feel like you have uh, a little bit more control. You have a little bit more heft in the hand. It's kind of the difference between, if you, if you want to think of it this way, it's kind of like when you have a knife with titanium scales 
and then you have a knife that has, you know, uh, stainless steel scales, you know, or if you have a knife, uh, or if you have a firearm, if you have a Glock, which is, you know, a polymer body with, you know, a steel upper, which is the slide, as opposed to a 1911, you know, that's uh, steel uh, upper and lower. So you have the grip that's everything except for the actual, the grip insert is metal. And then the slide is metal as well. So for me, I was looking for something that's a little bit more aggressive. So I could do one of two things. It's either like throwing a dart at the dartboard, see what hits. And I've, I, I've bought my share of, uh, of, of different razors and you're gonna see them. Uh, in different videos, or you can buy adjustable razors. Actually, oh, sorry, it's not side to side, so it's, it's down up against the grain. So you can buy an adjustable razor. Now, there are essentially two versions of adjustable razors that I've come across. I might be wrong. These should be the main ones. Uh, one, you have, it's very similar to the twist to open uh, Gillette razor. You know, in fact, there's one that's very famous. It's called the Fat, the fat Boy. Uh, and basically, depending on the twist of the knob that's usually at the very top when you twist it, it has a numerical, you know, order. And the higher the number, the higher the aggression that you get with the razor. But a lot of them are vintage. You can get other companies that have it, like Rockwell Razors has the Model T. And then you have uh, Rex, uh, which is uh, people from Razor Emporium. But you have the Ambassador which is a very nice one. I haven't checked that one out yet. I'm hoping to check that one out sometime. But I've been told it's pretty aggressive after a certain number. And then you have something very akin to say Carve uh, with a K or Rockwell, which is what I have in their six line. They have the six C, which is Chrome. And then they have the 6S, which is steel. The chrome one is made in China. It's actually really good. It has two variants, and I actually have one over there. Uh, they have the standard chrome, and then they have a gunmetal version. Really nice. And then they have the US made version, which is the 6S. And it comes in just a standard kind of uh, stainless look, like a brushed stainless steel. It's kind of like a matte uh, finish. And then you have different colors. You've got blue, you've got red, and you've got black. Those colors run you a little bit more money. Personally, I mean, it is what it is. You know, it's because people like variety. I just got the normal Point Jane version. Happened to get it during Black Friday on a sale. I got a really good deal on it. Those will generally cost you about a hundred bucks. And it comes with three different base plates that are interchangeable. And it's funny because you can actually turn them over and it's a different aggression. So you have, ideally, because it's not numbered this way, but you'll have plate one and then plate two plate three and plate four and then you know you have one last plate it's like plate five and then plate six and the way that you judge the aggression is each plate has a number on it and the number that's on the bottom when you're looking at the bottom of the cap or the bottom of the base plate is the aggression that you're using now i've used all of them and i much prefer either plate five or plate six 
just for me, that's that just works for me. I'll go ahead and get a little bit of water on my hand. There we go. Kind of dampen this area up a little bit for my final pass. I love this soap, the Sago base. I'm getting shave soap everywhere, but I don't give a shit. I'll wash the <laughs> I'll wash the shirt when I'm done. All right, here we go. So yeah, I do have, I actually have a, uh, a Rockwell 6S and a 6C. And the reason why I have both is because of the fact that I had originally bought the 6C because I wanted to try it out. Wasn't sure whether I get something like that or even, you know, maybe an adjustable twist to open like the Fat Boy or the Rockwell, you know, the Model T. Or even the Ambassador. And I was even actually considering picking up a Carve razor that actually comes with a, uh, I think it's called the Daily Shavers Kit and it has uh, different plates. And they're not numerical, they're alphabetical in progression. So you'll have, you know, A, B, C, D, E, that sort of thing. And they have both closed comb, which is like a solid bar. And then they have open comb, which makes it, it looks like it kind of has teeth at the end of the, uh, the razor. And the thing is, I didn't want to get anything in brass. If I was going to get something, I was going to get something in steel. Rockwell just seemed a little bit cheaper and... For right now, the mild to mid aggression level has worked fine for me. So I said, eh, if it's the same thing between the 6C and the 6S, the only difference is one is, you know, chrome plated, probably like zinc, which I have a cheaper metal. And the fact that the 6S is steel, I'm like, all right, let me go ahead and try the 6C. And I liked it so much that I bought the success. Now why? Well, I bought it so that the 6C can be kept for traveling when I'm gonna travel to a different, uh, you know, uh, pre-COVID, I guess, or post-COVID. I travel for meetings, for work. <clears throat> I have the 6C. And then at home, I have my 6S. So occasionally you'll see me rock out with the uh, the Rockwell 6S. And then sometimes I'll use the 6C. In fact, I've used the 6C a lot more than the 6S, even though it's essentially the same thing. But great razor, great price. If you can hold out, get yourself just a standard razor. You can get the King C Gillette, which is available on Amazon. And I think they sell it at Walgreens. That's where, that's where I got mine. That was my first three-piece razor and it was like 30 bucks great deal um or you can use that and hold off until there's a sale at rockwell usually they'll do like a 10 15 maybe 20 percent off sale that's how i got mine you have back black friday i have a 20 20 percent off and it's a pretty good deal so i'm just going to do one quick against the green and then my final thoughts with the post shave. Okay. Get this little area here. One thing I really appreciate about this particular razor is that the head is nice and thin, so it allows you to be able to get under the nose, you know, and just little tighter spots. Fairly easy.
All right, so now that that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and wash my face and then get into the post shave. So stay tuned and we'll get into that and I will give you my final thoughts on the Explorer from Zingari Man. Uh, now we're gonna go into the recovery splash. Um, this is a non-alcohol based splash. So if uh, you're interested in you know shaving and you don't want that burn from alcohol or you don't wanna use it just yet, go with this and the balm uh, can't go wrong. In fact, um, if you don't even want this, you can just get like a regular unscented uh, witch hazel type of toner and you really will get the same benefits as a lot of the different toners or recovery splashes in this case because we're referring to Zingari Man. And man, let me tell you that scent. Oh, so good. Scent level, I want to say the strength is easily out of 10. It's like a six or a seven. Just enough to where you can really feel, you can really smell it. I can smell it nice and fragrant as I'm putting it on. Soap was great. It was just right. It's not too uh, light and it's not too heavy. If it's too heavy sometimes, too much product is used and it'll cause irritation on the skin. My concern is more performance of the soap on the skin. And then, you know, after the shave, if you want something on the toner or even the splash or the balm, okay, then go ahead and scent the fuck out of it. <laughs> but uh, great, great stuff. This recovery splash, also the Explorer from Zingari Man. And if you're going to use a balm, you know, I tend to usually stick to the same scent or I'll go unscented. It's always good to have an unscented balm in your shave then because then you can add it to anything just like it's good to have an unscented uh, shave, um, an aftershave splash. So in this case, with this one, once it sits for a little while, um, what I like to do is I like to kind of just give it a shake. And the reason being is because what's in here um, is essentially it's denatured alcohol. You're going to get water. Um, you have um, aloe vera juice, glycerin, that sort of thing. Basically like skin food mixed with water and denatured alcohol. And that all starts to kind of separate. And you'll see certain things rise to the top. And it's like, it's like when you put uh, oil and water together, you're going to notice that there's going to be a separation there. And then what you want to do is shake it really well once the toner is dry and I think yeah, it's about there it's about there so I'll go ahead and throw that on here my thing is to get it hold the topper get a little bit there all right rub that on the hands let it sit for a moment no burn at all. None at all. It's crazy. Let me tell you guys, you guys got to try this trick. You got to try this trick. I'm going I'm to I'm double dip on that, actually. Do that again. Oh, so good. And the thing is, it allows all of the uh, the added stuff that they put in there that's not alcohol to really sink into the skin. And it has, still has a little bit of alcohol in it so that it uh, treats certain places like that little nick area. So you can see it's not even, it's not even you know, going to bleed or anything like that anymore. Oh, so good. So that was the aftershave splash not from zingari man because they don't do alcohol splashes but it is from phoenix artisan accoutrements this is a sin s-i-n which is fragrance free you can pick that up on their website um phoenix artisan accoutrements.com or in short phoenix shaving and that'll go ahead and forge you over to them now onto the balm i think for now two pumps will do you here you go one two you can see how much spread into the hand I tend to put in the hard to reach areas first and then let it ride Oh, 
good stuff. Yeah. Nice. And this, uh, the scent on this one, because everything is scented, this one scented a little bit less. I want to say it's like a four. Don't really need much. You know, it's not unscented. It's clearly not unscented. You can smell it just, very, it's very faint. Oh man, it feels good once you put it on. And that shave leaves your skin nice and smooth. Again, hashtag darn close shave. <laughs> and um, now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and finish it off with a spray or two. There. With Zingari Man's inspiration, Bulgari Man Wood Essence. Really, really good stuff. I'll go ahead and put that a little bit closer so you can see it. There we go. And that's it, folks. So, uh, again, Zingari Man, uh, Phoenix Shaving, Bulgari, uh, DS Cosmetics uh, with the Kevy Shave brush. Yeah, Charcoal Goods, Razor Rock. Uh, kind of a smorgasbord of uh, different people that are a part of this shave. And then, obviously, the Pocket Dump with the Kershaw Bare Knuckle in 14C28 and Steel, U.S. Made folding knife from Kershaw, and Lumen Top with the EDC-05. Go ahead and check out that review if uh, you have a moment. I'll put that link at the end of this video. And uh, yeah, hope to see you guys next time. And just remember, guys, whether you use a $10 razor or a $250 razor like uh, this carbon right here that I have done a video on, and I'll post that at the end. Just remember, guys, if you EDC, take a DCS. You guys have been great. Thank you for staying the long haul during this shave. If you are still one of the few that's watching the end of this. And I'll see you guys next time. I got to clean up here and head to sleep because it's late and I got work tomorrow. So, peace.